Good morning. I believe I'm up and running now. It's a fine Monday morning here in South Georgia. It's nice and cool. I'm Bradley McAllister. This is Monday Methods. Got the AC on. Going to do something a little bit different today. We're not going to turn. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, a decorative finish, as you see here. Uh, this is a, a great thing, and we're going to have fun doing it. Uh, I'll take you through all the steps. Um, I want to say, take, take a minute and say, I hope everybody's doing well. I hope everybody's staying safe and healthy. I know right now this is a pretty crazy time. Uh, it's down here where I am at. It's not horrible. Uh, I hope everybody who's into places like New York City and out in California, maybe, and uh, Louisiana, Florida, those areas, I hope everybody uh, takes good care of themselves. All right? Uh, it's really important that we all get through this, and we will. So in the meantime, let's have a little fun and do some decorating. And I've got this running th this morning, theoretically. I know it's on Facebook. I see the Facebook. My mom just jumped in. My dad here, Arthur Miller. Good morning, you guys. Good to see you. Glad I'm up and running. Uh, I always have a concern right now. There's so many people on the Internet. The Internet's being used so heavy. Uh, when I first turned things on, I was only getting a, a, a feed of about 640 kilobits. And that wasn't enough. I uh, shut off a bunch of stuff in the house, and we got it up around uh, 4,000. So hopefully the feed holds today. I know last week uh, it was in and out, and technology is one thing. I can control my end to the best of my ability, but out there on the once it leaves the house in the Internet world, nothing we can do about that. Anyway, we hope that it stays solid and doesn't drop, uh, doesn't drop frames and slow down and get artifacted or drop out completely. I know YouTube last week was really strange. It it ran for two hours, but it only showed the last 20 minutes. So go figure. Uh, Technology is a wonderful thing until it doesn't quite work right. Um, I'm going to jump over here real quick and take a look at the screens. It looks like everything's looking all right. Uh, let me check over here to the YouTube land. YouTube land looks good. All right. Good deal. All right, so, and I've got my switcher down here today, so I don't have to have it up on the lathe. So, uh, what are we up to? Well, Chromacraft and Nick Agar got together several years ago and created a, a line of products, and Nick's put his name on them, and he's been very instrumental in the development of it. Uh, wouldn't happen without him. And two of the products that I'm going to use today are uh, WebFX, which is a spray-on um, Rayon product that gives a web or spider web effect, and you can use it a lot of different ways. And I was trying to find a bowl, of course, you know me, I'm still trying to get organized, that had uh, turquoise and black on a maple bowl. And I ran out to the warehouses this morning, and I still can't put my hands on it. And then I was going to put a picture up for you. Uh, it's on the Facebook, Spidercraft Facebook page. If you'll scroll through the pictures, you'll see it. It's a big maple bowl. Uh, it's got the spider webs, like I said, in blue, or uh, turquoise and black. And that's pretty cool. And I was going to throw a picture up, but then the internet was running slow on and on. So anyway, we're going to use this, and it's the basis um, of our texture that we're going to use today. And then on top of that, when we uh, get it all painted up, we're going to use a product called Chroma Gilt. And let me jump over here to number three, the overhead. It's just a little tube of paste. Uh, they worked for a long time on this. So they got the right consistency. This stuff is really cool. Uh, comes in one, two, three, four, five, six colors. Uh, the web effects comes in five colors. Back to the front screen. So great stuff. It's in the Spirecraft store if you're interested in a project like this. So how does this work? Again, here is our finished piece. And let me jump to the overhead and get you up close here. And you can see the texture. I'm going to get real close and see if this will stay in focus. And turn it slowly. It's actually extremely simple to do. And this piece came out really well. Uh, if I'm honest, which I am, this is the first time I've done this with this particular product in this fashion. Uh, I'm really happy with the way it worked out. It's much easier to do than you might think. All right? A few little tricks, uh, as always. But it's really neat. So we start out with a, and I've got kind of a cooking show thing here, plain piece of wood ready for the first stage, uh, a piece of wood that has had web effects applied to it. 
a piece of wood that has web effects applied to it and uh, satin black paint put on it and then the finished piece so so that I don't mess this up I'm gonna move it off to the side all right because I like it a lot it's really cool so I just Don't you love live? So my wire got caught on the lathe. We'll have to remember that. <laughs> it's always something. Anyway, I put that guy off to the side. Hopefully it didn't pull the wire out. It looks like every sound feed is still there. It's crazy. It's crazy. I have to be careful about that. I don't have the wire tucked inside my jacket. And maybe I will. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to just... Uh, overhead shot of these three pieces and I'm going to go over here and change this wire because I know it's going to happen again so hang with me and I'm going to take my jacket off change this wire and fix that Okay, all right, I should have done that to start with, but I was moving fast. Now the wire's put away, bad on me. All right, so going through the process, we start with the bare piece of wood, and I just grabbed these things out of uh, the boxes out in the warehouses. One of the nice things about this project is you can take a piece of wood that isn't necessarily perfect anymore. Uh, even this piece here, if I get up close, you can see there's a bunch of uh, tear out in the end grain all right get you up there where you can see that that doesn't you don't have to sand a, a piece to be perfect and that's the beauty of this when we apply our web effects and we apply our our paint we're going to take care of that and that's part of the texture remember we're building uh, texture here so it's okay to have a piece uh, that is not perfect and matter of fact, when you get, like I say, when you get a piece that's not going to work for you, great. And for something else, this is a perfect candidate for this kind of project. Uh, you do want to make sure that you have removed, you know, any big, uh, if you've got a big round uh, circular tool mark that goes all the way around, that might telegraph through. And so you'd want to be sure uh, you're rid of that. This one doesn't have anything like that. Okay. So we should be good there. Um Gloves. This is one for gloves. All right. You know, I mean, I'm usually not a, a big glove guy, but the way you have to do it, I'm going to have to hold this. So I put on a glove. Now, this product or this effect, I used to do a spider web effect uh, with dyes, and this is very similar to that. And it's pretty cool. The dye didn't have any texture to it. So we never had that option. Now I'm going to shake this up really well. This is a fun little project. And uh, I like to say, I was really impressed on how easy uh, it is to do and how well it came out. So if you've got any questions, pop them in over there in the chat box room. I On YouTube, if you happen to be on YouTube, that, that chat box does not come up in this service. Although I am watching on one of the computers. Uh... So if you have questions about this, please, please holler at me. So I didn't do anything special to prep this wood, all right? It's not been sealed. Um, you could do that, but I haven't. Uh, I'm not terribly concerned about it. On the web effects can, one of the things you can do is you can rotate the nozzle and make the pattern, the fan pattern go one way or the other so it can be horizontal or it can be vertical all right now you probably outside and i'm going to do this inside i did it outside for this piece 
Um, it can be a little messy. And let me see. I'm trying to decide. I think probably the best way for me to show this to you. I hate to do it right on that. Let's see here. Let's get a plan. Bradley and his plans, sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. Um, I'm, I'm looking at the other, the other shots here, the other angles. How I can best show this to you. You're just going to see the back side. And you kind of want, you have to hold it a, a distance away. Uh, one of the uh, key things about the web effects is it is subject to the pattern you get depends on how fast or slow you move the, 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 can, the spray across the piece and how close or far away you are. So you kind of have to adjust and play with it. And I just want to see, I think I'm going to adjust, uh, I want to say I'm going to adjust the side camera. That's, that works pretty well right there. But I'm going to spray everything else in the world. So I'm going to make a change here for a moment while I spray this. And I'm going to cover up my table just for this, this one section here. And I think this will work. That light might be a little weird, but I think this will work. Again, I'm testing looking in another camera. So if I do that. All right. Eh. Yeah, that should do the trick. All right. So to apply this, we're going to go, I'm going to show you from camera three which is over here on the side. I'm just going to stick my hand inside. And actually, you can see it from the top, too. And the top has a better color to it. There's some strange shadows in here. I'll do it from both. There's some light on it. So this happens to be blue. Uh, the color is irrelevant because we're going to paint the whole thing black. So I'm going to do two uh, rounds of this, or two coats, not immediately at the same time. Okay. Oop, I moved it out of the way where you can't see it. My bad. See where I, why the glove is important? I got to see. I got to figure out how to uh, spray and keep an eye on which way you're looking at it. Let me go to the overhead for you because that will show you a little bit better. So you can see how the texture is going on. Now this one, I don't have too many, but one thing you want to do, I just grab a little screw here. If you have bubbles, and you can see like right in here, if you get these bubbles, pop the bubbles. All right, they just kind of, they're a byproduct sometimes of it forming. Look for any big bubbles so you don't have them. This one sprayed up really well. This thing is going to be nice uh, with this natural edge on it and everything else. And to keep the good light on there. I think that the uh, white paper throws off the white balance on the camera because I don't have things on auto right now. So just a few bubbles, not too many. Get that up there where you can see. All right, now it doesn't look like it's real thick, uh, but compared to the smooth surface that's on, it's, uh, it's a pretty good texture. So I'm going to go around again, make sure my watch is covered here. Turn it over a little bit. So like I said, if you watch the paper here, that gives you an idea. That's an easier way to see how the effect works. It's pretty cool. If I get up close, I get that. If I stay far back, I get a texture like a color like that and a texture like that. All right? And it's super fun to work with, super easy. Okay, so let's set this piece down. 
and that's all the spray and that's that's all that you have to do that's all there is to that so we'll move the my controller back over here there we go we'll get rid of this piece of paper don't get caught up in my wire today okay yeah strange lights coming over here on the other oversight so it, th there's our piece i'd left the bottom uh alone our textures under it dries in about an hour uh, give or take all right now i may bring my piece back but i just don't like that color so let me see if there's any questions and then i'm gonna take it to the next step this really is an easy project to do and you get great results let me scroll down over here just to double check everything looks good there <coughs> okay I'm just going to use paper towel on the table here double up a paper towel I don't want that big white cardboard up here the next step this one I did earlier today and it's dry I did this maybe a little over an hour ago now and so it's dried nicely so I'm just going to use black satin paint right but now here's what's really important I figured this out the other day or I came to the conclusion work with me on this this is not a paintbrush all right I know it looks like a china bristle paintbrush from Harbor Freight but it's not it is a finish applicator what I discovered was the last thing you want to do is actually paint with it in strokes like a paintbrush uh, it defeats the purpose and it actually makes it just not work right so the best way it's so dark in the overhead I'm disappointed but I think I'm gonna I'm, I'm, I'm testing here I don't know what the deal is. I got lights all over the place on this. I'm gonna I'm gonna move another light here. I'm gonna adjust the light real quick. See if I can't get some more light on the subject. Get that color to change. A little bit. Doesn't seem to want to cooperate. One of those days. So I think, yeah, I'll just work with the overhead and just we'll we'll tolerate the strange looking light. So black satin, uh, just latex paint. All right. Now instead of brushing it on, and, and keep this in mind, just dab it with the brush. Okay. We're actually this is another layer of texture, and this is super simple. So don't make any brush strokes. All right. I'm going to try and hold that up as long as my arm lasts. Be liberal with the amount that you put on because we're building texture so the paint not being smooth not being flat is part of the process and I need to change the camera to the overhead so you can see that what I was doing okay so I'm just dabbing away super super simple And when the paper's crooked. Real easy to do. Now, once we get this all the way around, we'll let it sit and kind of keep an eye on it. If it uh, starts to, if you start to see an area, like if you're getting a run, once it's, once it's standing vertical, then just go and dab that, that area again. Again, we're building texture. Just think texture. We don't want a smooth coat of paint. We want it to be rough and bumpy. Like I see an area over here, the right. I don't know if you can see this. See right here, it's looking smooth. So I'm just going to come back. I mean, the paint's trying to flow out, 
and if we if we could if there was an anti flow control agent that would be what we would want okay go around and make sure you have everything covered then I'll stop and do the top okay it's that simple so we have our now we have our web effects completely covered and we're creating a texture with our paint as well and just go around it a few times and that's what I'm going to do we'll, we'll kind of keep chatting here and as this starts to flow I'm going to go back and it'll start to, to your paint will start to skim over and set up so just go around it a number of times until it's it it starts to set a little bit and won't run and get smooth. Now this still has the tenon on it. Don't worry about that. I'm just grabbing stuff uh, as quick as I could. Uh, there was a little spot. Okay. So I'm going to set that down for a second and I'm going to switch over here and I'm going to go check over here on the uh, on the boxes. Art, Art, how you doing out there, buddy? You doing all right? What are you doing up in Jersey Way? Glad you're not on the cruise ships anymore. I'm actually watching the replay because it's 20 seconds behind, so I can see that you were able. Looks like you were able to see pretty well uh, what that was doing. Okay. Good deal. Now again, this is the end result that we're after. All right? Now, this is the hardest not the hard well, yeah, it's the hardest part to be to be reserved. Uh it takes very little. And when I say very little, I mean very little uh of the product of the chroma gilt on the piece. Get that there. It takes very little of the chroma gilt uh, to to make the the effect, and it's easy to overload uh, your application uh, method. So I'm going to use a paper towel. I think a sea sponge, a, one of the decorative sea sponges, would be a great way to go. What we want to do is we want to keep the effect for the most part on top of the surface. If it gets down in down below you lose some of that depth so like keeping it up on the top not weaving all the way down inside uh, is is what we're after and it's really easy to have to too much all right that's what i discovered i'm going to go around this one more time and just dab it up make sure she's all all dabbled really well not starting to get smooth. So you understand now why the piece can have, if it's got texture in it, if it's got tear out in it, things of that nature, that's actually to your advantage. That's going to give you uh, free texture. It, in, a, in a project like this, free texture is really good. That's what we're after. Okay? I'll say go all the way around this one more time. And I think on our, our piece today, I may put a couple of different colors on it uh, just for fun so you can see the different what the different colors look like. I, yesterday, when I, I just put the gilt on that other one yesterday, and I used three of them, but I may make a, I may do like the, the verdigris and the silver as well just to show you the highlights. Okay? So let me get, uh, let me get this guy out of my way. Uh, get you over here. For a second, so you don't have to watch me walking around. Get my paint out of there. I don't believe we'll be using any more of that today. Okay. And I am going to change glove. I got a whole box here just because I don't want the black paint interfering uh, with what I'm working on. All right. 
Now, I've watched, if you watch uh, Nick's, Nick Agar's video on applying the guilt, he uses a method where he loads um, his thumb, he loads the product on his thumb, and then touches his, thing, his forefinger to his thumb. You can't see that it's too dark, um, like that. And what I found on this type of texture, at least in my experience, was that my finger allowed it to go down inside a little more than I wanted to. So what I'm going to use, I'm going to take a paper towel. Okay. Paper towel. I'm actually use two of these. This is kind of a strange technique, and there's a million ways you could go about this. This is not, I'm just showing you how, how I've done it so far. There's a lot of different ways to do this, a lot of different ways. So here's our, here's our sample piece. I know it's black, and I'm wearing black, so it makes it kind of hard to see. Uh, so let me go overhead for you. So this is our sample piece, all right? Just a simple little bowl. And um, let's go with, let's say, a Saxton Gold. So we're going to take a gold, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it on a paper towel, and I guess I'll go back overhead. And I'm just going to put a little bit on this paper towel, all right? See that? Now I'm going to take another paper towel, figure this out, and I'm going to spread that around, all right, so that I don't have a big clump. And I want as light an application. I can always come back and add more. But I want as light an application on my paper towel or my applicator as possible. Now let's see how this does on the first swipe. I'm, I'm going to hold this up close. I just have my finger behind it. And see how, I mean, I just barely touch the surface. All right? Barely touching the surface. And that's, that's what we want to do. Now, how much texture you want is completely up to you. Let me get this. I'm trying to get that where you can see it in the light. Kind of hard to see in that camera light. We're just highlighting the surface. And all I have is one little dab on that paper towel. Okay? Now, that's a Saxton Gold. Okay? Super simple. It's only highlighting the tops. It goes down inside a little bit in a place or two. Trying to make sure you get a good look at that. And I may walk over to the other camera whose light I like better. Let me do that. Let me see what happens. Here. I'm going to walk right up to the front camera. I'm going to walk right up there and see if I can get this where you can see it. Keep the focus. It may not focus with the background there. I turn if I figure out how to run upside down backwards. So it's just going right on the surface. And that's what gives us that effect. All right. All right. My wife Bridget is monitoring for me today. Uh, she's home. She says it's looking and sounding good. All right. JP's here. What do you know, JP? The art. Say your cruise was canceled. We're doing well at the shore. Are you allowed to walk on the beach, Art? I hope you're allowed to go out and walk on the beach. Let me move, scroll down here. Let's see if I can scroll in gloves. Hope you're doing well, JP. Good to see you. All right. So that's 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 as hard as it gets. All right. Now let's try another color. Let's have some fun. Uh, this is going fast. We've got plenty of time. Be the first time I'm ever done in in a, an hour or less, which will be really novel for me. But I don't want to keep y'all any longer than necessary. Uh, if you have questions about anything else, I got. I'm going to show you a couple other things before I'm done here today. Uh, some foam. If you've seen the pictures of the the uh, the funny looking mushroom resin goofball thing that that uh, happened. I'm going to pull that. I'll bring that over. We'll talk about that. I'm pretty sure I actually know what happened. 
um, I'm 99% sure I know what's going on, is called living in the south and using urethane resin. Let's, I'm going to do a little bit of verdigris on here. And I'm just going to mix this up. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move all the colors around because we'll have all these uh, different applicators here with color. And I need to pop this one open. This one is fresh. So who knows what kind of a mess. You never know what you're going to get. Right? So, yes, sometimes you can make a mistake. You can mess up and it's too much. You know what? If you mess it up and it's just uglier and thin, let the chroma gill dry. Put another coat of black paint on it. Start again. You can't really go wrong. That's the beauty of this. Because the textures, there's not going to change. So you make it really, you don't, you don't like it. Let the chroma gilt dry overnight. Put another coat of black paint back on it. Try it again. You haven't lost a thing. You have not lost a thing. So I'm going to go back on the overhead here for you. You see just a little dollop on there. Just, I mean, just a touch. Okay? Doesn't take much at all. Then I'm going to spread that around on my paper towel applicator. It's surprising. This is this is the part that I think is the most important. It's surprising how little of the product you need to use. Right? It goes a long, long way. So let's come over here. I'm gonna fold this back around. Kind of get my finger behind that. And yep, I'm on, I'm on the right camera. And so just ever so lightly, boy, that's not going to show up in the camera. It looks great if you're right here uh, close. The light in here for some reason today is horrible. There we go. Okay. So there's, there's what the verdigris is looking like. All right. There's there's the Saxton gold. Wish I had that kind of light down here on the, the surface of the table. But for some reason today I don't. So let's see if I can't see if I can do this. Talk about pat your head and rub your stomach at the same time. I'm watching myself in the camera. Or in the in the monitor. Okay, so that I've used uh, kind of used up about what was on there, but that is the look. All right, there's a black spot still left there. So now I'm going to switch over to silver. No beach, Art says no beach. Sorry about that, Art. Th is your beach closed? I know what happened here um, in Georgia is. The closest beach to us is outside of Savannah, uh, Tybee Island. And the Tybee Island city, city of Tybee, closed the beach. This is where, you know, government stuff gets strange in, in life. They, Tybee closed the beach, and then the governor came along and mandated new rules last week for everybody's shelter in place and it's mandatory you stay home and all that but said that the beaches were open to walk on and exercise and the state level trumps or supersedes county level so the beaches had to reopen and let me get just popped back open this one's been open for a while I haven't used it in a while I may have to use my my favorite ice pick. Hang on just a second. Get this guy flowing again. There we go. All right. This, uh, the Viking silver, uh, Nick Agar's made famous in his Viking Bowls. Uh, everybody, if you've seen his, his Viking Bowl work, you, you know this, this silver very well. So let's go ahead and load up another, another pad here. And again, just 
a little dollop. Okay. Doesn't take much. Just a little teeny spot. Take my second paper towel. Hold it over a little bit better now. And just spread that around. All right, that helps give us a nice flat surface for applying. I think that's the big key, is the flat surface. Now I'm going to go way up high here to start with and see if you can see it as I do this. There's that one black section right there, and we're going to go uh, let me get my head, everything right here. So there's the silver. There's the, there was a little you can see right there. That's fairly, but that's actually a fair big, fairly big spot of texture. If you have too much somewhere, uh, sometimes you can you can thin it down a little bit, wipe it down a little bit. All right. So I have three colors on here now. And I think what I want to do is I'm going to go around the whole piece uh, very, very lightly with all the different colors. Um, not all the colors, but the, I'm going to bring out one more color. I want to bring out the antique brass. Okay. We'll load up a batch of antique brass. And then I'm going to have fun experimenting. Like I say, if I ruin this piece... Well, if I make it ugly, I can't ruin it. Then I can always just paint it black. I can just paint it black and do it again. But I want to add all these colors over top of each other and see what kind of effect I get. Just for fun. I love to experiment. And, and that's what I encourage everybody to do when you're working on your turning projects and especially being decorative. Uh, experiment. When I was teaching doing the colors with the dyes, dyeing color, and I would do a, an all-day class. And I would uh, try and get people to understand to go ahead and, and try things. Everybody wanted it to be perfect, and they were trying to have a, and it was supposed to be uh, at more of an abstract, and they, they couldn't sometimes get a grip on just letting go, and letting it do what it's going to do. And if it didn't work, I'll shoot your paint over it. You do it again. All right, so now we have a little antique brass. And let me change cameras for you again here. And I'm going to put the antique brass right over top of the turquoise. And I'm actually going to go all the way around the piece, right over the silver. And I'm just kind of touching here and there. And that's what I'm going to do with all these colors. So I'm going to blend them all together or have a, a, a mix of colors in here. All right. Now the silver is going to take a little extra work because it's pretty bright. I'm going to put a little more extra brass on top of the silver right here. But I don't want to completely hide it. All right. That's the key. And we're going to have a, a very unique piece with the different colors. Uh, I'm going to take the turquoise and run the turquoise around. Verdigris, it looks turquoise to me. I'll add a little bit more of that. So you might see that it actually picks up some of the other colors, so you have to be kind of careful about that. Just fold your applicator over a fresh spot a little dab let's call this one the diffuser we will diffuse it onto our applicator I like making up terms and again just some highlights of the vertigree Now, when this is all dry, um, to protect it, a coat of uh, 
water-based urethane, like the Chromacraft WRU20 uh, urethane. It doesn't put a sheen on it. It just protects it. It seals it. Um, but it doesn't look like it doesn't make it glossy. Doesn't make it matte. It just stays. It looks just like it did. It's very interesting stuff. Uh, I've been real happy, and I've got some over here, and I'll show it to you. Okay. So lots and lots of things. Let's go to. I want to go back to the first color, which was Saxton Gold. We used did it, did we not? And a little bit more of that back on top. So a little dab. That's my diffuser. This is my applicator. Another little teeny dab on there. Keep all my jars straight. Diffuse that once again. And we can do the inside too as well. And then I'm just coming very lightly over the top of all these other colors. Now, I haven't done the bottom here. Let's do the bottom real quick. We'll do it, just go around like that with the bottom. Don't worry. I'm not worrying about the bottom bottom there. Okay. And I'll come back with my verdigris on the bottom. I had better light on that for you today. I have to get it just right angle where you can kind of see it. I'll th I'll post pictures of this uh, as well, uh, taken in the in the light box, and you'll be able to see because I can see all the different colors in here, uh, and it's looking great. It really is. I think I'm just about, and I'm not going to do the inside. Well, we've got time. It's only ten for now. Let's do the inside. Let's put some color on the inside. Now let me see something here. I'm going to experiment by zooming in and see if my light changes on this camera. I don't know if it's going to do me any good today or not. Light seems to be fighting me. It does help a little bit. You can see the various colors now. Zoomed in a bit more. Okay, so we've got all those different colors in there. And I'm just going to go ahead and load up again. Uh, the inside has actually got a fair bit of texture to it. My Saxton Gold first. Another little dab on there. Of course, I'm holding it now with an ungloved hand, but that's okay. And I'm just going to come inside here. And there's I didn't spray much texture on the inside, so it may not do what I want, or it may be too smooth. Again, I can always paint it black again. Um, this piece wasn't finished being turned. Sometimes I like to leave the inside of a piece just completely black and void of anything. Um, more than likely, I'll probably repaint this one black. I, I did that a lot on pieces. Well, there's a couple of reasons. I would leave a piece black on the inside because I didn't want to sand it. I'd, I'd paint it or dye it uh, black and just leave it with no finish on it. So we can, you can put that in there. Uh, again, this is you can see the little, this wasn't finished being turned. You can see the little center spot there. But that's all there is to her. It's super simple. Super easy. And I'll take the other piece, and I'll, and I'll show you just brushing on the, the WRU-20. And we'll put some on the piece that's finished. And that's all there is to her. So now that we have light here, let me show you. This is what it looks like just on the raw wood, just the texture itself. Okay. So... I got time. I'm going to try some, uh, just for yucks, just for yucks. I'm going to not put any black paint on this. I'm going to rub this, I'm going to rub this down with silver. I'm going to put it on and I'm going to wipe it off and see what kind of effect I get. You guys game for that? 
Will you post a shopping list for today's project? Uh, sure, I'll put it on the Spirecraft page art. Uh, I will list up the, the web effects, the Chroma Guild, and the WRU20. Absolutely, that's a great suggestion. Thank you for that. So let's, let's just take a chance. Let's just step out and take a chance here and see what happens. Get the right colors back on things. That's that one. That's silver, brass. I'm not worried about messing this piece up. Um, oh, through making making a mess here though. Uh, I'm not worried about doing it. It it might it's a different effect. And what I just now I forgot what color I said I was going to do. I'm going to do the silver. That's what I said. Think. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't pay attention to what I say sometimes myself. Because the verdigris wouldn't wouldn't go with the blue. So the blue and silver could be interesting. Could be ugly. You know? Kind of hard to say. So let's take our silver applicator. Back to the overhead. And I'm going to put quite a bit on here now. All right, so this is a little bit different approach. We're going to flood it with the silver and then wipe it back off and expose the blue. All right. Different approach. All right, let's see what happens. I'm just going to leave this right here. Now, see, yeah, this one I didn't clean up at all. So when I do that, you can see the uh, the turning marks there. Now take if this will expose some of the blue back to it. And this blue is also I just sprayed this a little while ago. Okay. So the I see the blue isn't dry it's kind of smearing underneath there but let's try one more one more little idea that i have here just for fun because i like to try love to try things i'm going to take a little bit of alcohol denatured alcohol and i've done this before where i wash things out and basically dilute it I haven't tried this on this before, so I don't know what the effect is going to be. But I start to see the blue. Again, I think what's happening, just because I sprayed this just an hour ago and I'm rubbing on it, so the, uh, the web effects underneath isn't dry yet. But now you can see I'm starting to, to get some of the blue to show. These uh, tool marks, not the greatest. Um, remember, there's no black paint on here yet, which would have helped to hide those. But let's keep taking some of this off. If the more you experiment, the more things that you will figure out. Okay. So if it wasn't for the tool marks, you know that that concept might work. I think putting the the, the sub paint on first is a much better technique, and, and especially since I didn't let uh, let the this dry completely. I'm not really getting the effect I want, but hey, it's a piece of wood. We try it. All I, I can still. I'm, I'm going to paint this black, um, and not worry about it. So you never know what's going to happen. Try new things. It's a little piece of wood. I'm not worried about it. If it didn't do what I wanted it to do, how else you going to know? As they say, you don't know till you go. All right, a little WRU20, and I have some right over here. So I'm just going to go back uh, this guy right here, put him there upside down, like that, so that I can walk over in front of the camera and get a little cup.
I got I got programs popping up on computers that want to do things. Hey, Tom Klein, good to see you. Yeah, we're all doing good. We're all doing good. All right, I'm having fun. So, the dum boom. The WRU twenty. It's clear. Got a little bit of a. Oh, that's the sealer. Duh. A WRU twenty. I'm going to walk in front of the camera after all. I don't feel like changing it. Talking and not paying attention. The WRU-20, I don't know why I said it's clear, because I know it, it, it's water-based, so it looks white. WRU-20, water-reducible urethane. I love this stuff. Once I started using it, I was like, oh, this stuff is great. Because uh, it doesn't leave a finish. It doesn't look like anything, especially... When I'm using the Rustina product uh, from Crovercraft, and then I put the WRU20 on top of it, it uh, you can't tell there's any finish on it. Now, when you first put it on, just like if you put it on your your if you do uh, water-based poly on your hardwood floors and you freak out because all of a sudden your your floor is white, it goes as you know it goes away and goes clear. So I just put a little bit here in my yogurt cup. Uh, first time I did that, but my, my hardwood floors, uh, it wasn't this house. It was up in North Carolina. Uh, and I went, oh, my God, I, I messed it up. I didn't know. The first time I'd ever used water-based poly, I had no idea that it was going to turn white. All right. Overhead, a WRU-20. We're just going to brush this on. No, I want the other one, though. That one's not dry. Keep your act together, Bradley. This is the one I want. And you see it goes on. It's got a little bit of a white tinge to it. That's going to go away. That's going to seal and uh, protect, well, your black paint for sure, and definitely the chroma gilt so that it can't get uh, messed up, beat up. So when you go to dust it and all that, because it gets dusted in the house, now, you can spray this on, but uh, brush is just as easy. And now this whole piece will be protected, and this will dry, and it will have no, no sheen to it whatsoever. And it does a wonderful job. It dries quick. Oh, I know what I was going to tell you guys about, so let me get this on. So the little foam pieces that uh, I had done the resin work last week, I think it was last week, uh, and then I had used some of the urethane resin for that piece, which I still got sitting over there unfinished, of course. There go. Set that right there. So it, urethane resin, this is a complete departure from what we've been doing here. Urethane resin is very susceptible uh, to moisture, humidity, and it's fairly humid here. The piece that I put in the pressure pot, I didn't. There was no issue. It it um, it set up. It didn't. It didn't get all soft and foamy. These two guys. These were the ones. Now go overhead. That these are ultra lightweight. So I'm going to put them on a scale because this is the same amount of resin that is in. This, these these egg molds, these guys right here, the same amount of resin went in. These weigh dramatically more than these. And you can make urethane foam when you add moisture water to urethane foam. That's how it, it uh, to make a urethane foam, it's the moisture that makes it uh, foam up. So these are very light and airy, uh, but now they're cured. If I let me sign something hard here, and even this weird looking top, this will turn. I don't know how it'll turn or how well it'll turn, um, but that's what happened. The moisture, the humidity, and air. Cause these I just left sitting out on the counter. I I didn't do anything else with them. Didn't put them in the pressure pot, um, so they weren't under pressure and they were out in the humidity, and they got all. I mean. They weigh nothing. Kind of fun. Kind of interesting. 
I just wanted to share that with you because some people were asking about when I made that post um, what the deal was. So there we are with our textured colored technique using the web effects, some simple satin black paint, and then the chroma gilt to give us the looks that we are getting. And again, let me switch over to overhead. You can see this one. This is the finished piece. Now, it looks shiny right now, but I, I assure you when the WRU-20 dries down that it will um, be nice and, and matte. Okay. Here's the piece that we just did. A little bit different look to it. Go. So it's a very unique approach, and it's super simple. Real simple, no no black magic, no mystery. Um, I think the most important most important point to take away is how lightly you apply it. Put just a little teeny bit on a rag. Don't use a lot because um, it goes a long way. Experiment with different uh, applicators. I say a, a sea sponge might be a good one. Uh, a foam brush, foam brush. They have a nice flat surface, so you can load a foam brush, and it's not going. It's going to stay flat upon the just touch the surfaces, the high points. Uh, so that may not go down inside. Even the paper towel, my finger is behind it, so you may get a better a better effect by just hitting the highlights with something that is is truly flat, like a foam brush. Uh, that's the next thing I'm going to try. I I got one maybe somewhere, but I didn't grab it. So that's what I would I would try that as well. Uh, Lots of different things. And again, the, the web effects, you can do it on bowls and just by itself and the natural. And I wish I could have found the one I wanted to show you because you can actually build lacquer on it and have it be shiny or you can leave it natural, all kinds of good things. So that is pretty much what I have today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. This will be on Facebook here. It'll stay as an archive. It'll also it's on YouTube, I hope. It says it's going over there, so that will be good. Uh, I appreciate everybody coming by today. A little shorter than my usual stint. I mean, it's only uh, 11.05. Usually I run till about noon, but I'm turning stuff. Uh, next week, uh, I got another little project coming. It's still in development. I will let you know about it very shortly. Um, it's going to be something that I think that could help everybody. So, again, thank you, everybody. I'm going to shut her down. Uh, have a good week. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Stay away from the bugs, all that good stuff. And I will see you next week, and I will post a, a, a shopping list of these ton different products that you need to uh, do something like this. So thanks a lot. Have a good day, and have a good week. Bye now.